becomes, I don't know, more important in, in those games than in the typical regular season, if anything? No, I mean, I, I, you know, I think the biggest thing in postseason, especially conference play, because you're back to back to back, um, you know, just going in, going into the week with a, a game plan for the week, I think is always something we do, um, you know, because you just don't have as much time to prepare uh, for your opponent. So I think more than anything, I think we're going into this week with an offensive game plan to try to think of um, what we did against Nebraska, what we did against Minnesota, um, and just take it one game at a time, really, because you just can't look ahead to anything just because single elimination. No, just like, you know, today we'll, we'll go in and, and we'll, we'll take um, we'll take eight plays that we think that we can use, um, you know, for either Minnesota or um, Nebraska, and then we'll have a secondary package for the games going there. But defensively, we are who we are right now. So I like who we are defensively. It's just offensively, you know, you know, we struggled the last five minutes of the game against um, against Penn State offensively. If we had played a little better offensively, we'd have been all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we have someone watching it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, and then I think we have someone watching the bottom half of the, the other half of the bracket, but, um, we're lucky the same coaches had Minnesota and Nebraska. So that kind of got lucky a little bit. Uh, coach Don over the last, you know, four games has had double digits. How have you kind of seen him, you know, adjust to playing with this new team over the course of the season, and especially in the last, you know, couple games, if anything's changed since then? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I think Don attacked this year with, you know, great professionalism. You know, I think he understood that he wasn't going to have as big a role as he did at Georgetown or, or maybe his previous stops. But um, I think he's, I think, you know, even though he struggled shooting the basketball at times, I think he just kind of, he stayed with a great work ethic, stayed with a great attitude. And I think it's paid off for him. Coach, what do you think about Jameer being selected to the second team uh, instead of the first? Yeah, I guess I'm a little biased. I thought he should have been first. Um, you know, I think the votes had to be in before the Penn State game anyways. If I'm, yeah. Um, I just think what he's done for us in, in a year and where he's brought us and uh, we've put a lot on his back. But again, you can look at that first team and, and have an argument for every one of those guys too and the coaches would too. So I think him just being Second team, I guarantee he was really close to being a first team is an amazing accomplishment for Jameer Young. So I'm not going to worry so much that he's not first team. I, I'm glad it, that the coaches realized how important he was for us and how good of a player he is. I'm going to be biased and think he should be first team. But at the same time, I'm not going to take anything away from those those players that made first team because they are they they deserve it, too. Obviously, you have plenty of experience playing in conference tournaments. You've know, been head coach now for over a decade. Um, what does your routine look like at a neutral site compared to on the road? In a true road game, I, I you know I I had a good routine in the Big East. I kind of knew. I mean, growing up in New York, I kind of knew New York City. I used to walk the games. I, I don't know what it's like in the Big Ten tournament. I'm kinda, I'm looking forward to getting to Chicago. Um, I've only heard good things about the Big Ten tournament. So, um, I mean, you know, I've been stuck in the 9 p.m. game a lot. So I, I think we're comfortable with the 9 p.m. game. So we kind of have. I think that's. The routine for the players is more important than anything else. Coach, given what the magnitude of, of Sundays, you know, if you win, you get the three instead of the six. How was it hard to get the team past that and ready and moved on? And say, all right, Thursday. I don't know. Thursday, I haven't seen them. No, not a, we had no, we had off yesterday, um, or even at, well, I guess even afterwards, you get a sense of what. No, I mean, it was we were disappointed. Um, the lot that was that's probably the worst loss I've had as a head coach, um, and. I think the good thing is these guys were a little devastated, to be honest with you, um, because we played really well. I mean, we, we, that was the best we've played on the road in a while. Um, and we, you know, give Penn State credit. Um, Dredd hit some big shots, and we had a couple breakdowns late in the game 
Um, you know, we left funk one time, which, you know, was a little mystifying. Um, and even, even the last play, we, we played good defense. We rotated, we trapped Pickett, who was, who was tremendous. Um, got them to take a challenge shot and really we had three guys on the ball. We just kind of, we just kind of fumbled it. So, um, I'm proud of this basketball team. Like Sunday was tough, but you know, that's a great thing about conference tournaments, the NCAA tournament, it's a whole new year. And for this team to go 11 and nine to come in six with, you know, if we had played a little bit better on the road with a realistic shot to win the Big Ten, uh, if you had told me at the beginning of the year, that's the scenario you can have, I would have took it from day one. So this team has, this team has played great. I'm proud of them. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to Chicago. Um, Sunday hurt, but, you know, we'll learn from it. We'll watch the film and, you know, see what we can do better towards the end of the games. But um, to sit there and, you know, Jameer Young, second team, um, I think the progress Julian's made, um, you know, I, I just look at this year as a huge success. Reading one of the, the questions I had, Reese, you know, early on the beginning of the year, you said from what you saw when you got here to the beginning of the season, he had improved the most. And then it was he was out for a little while with an injury. It was still coming back from that. But his steady incline from that, you know, for the last six weeks, um, I guess it didn't surprise you at all. I think it surprised some people on the outside. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I look at, you know, I think especially with young kids, Julian's only 19. So Julian's a young sophomore, probably as young a sophomore. There, I mean, I was watching the College of Charleston game last night against Townsend, and I think someone said that there was a guy in the team that's like 27. Um, and then you look at Julian, who's 19, going against you know Zach Hunter, uh, Trace, uh, the absolute best big men in college basketball. Um, I think going against those guys, having to face those guys twice, really helped him develop. I think it gave him great confidence the second time going through. Um, I think I think the staff has worked really, really hard. And again, I, I, I knew he was going to have a great year because he's had a great attitude and he's had a great work ethic. And it's really not complicated. I, I say this all the time. If you want to be successful, have a great attitude and have a great work ethic. And good things are going to happen. And I think that's one reason why this team has done so good is because they've had a great work ethic and a great attitude. Um, but Julian's been... I've had more fun coaching Juju than I have probably anybody, and that's saying a lot. Dante's scoring output the last five, ten games has been a little bit down. What needs to happen to, to maybe get him going offensively going into the tournament? Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of people have been talking about that. I don't think people give Dante enough credit for what he does for us on the defensive end. Um, I, th I, think, I think Tay's a little worn out. I think I, I got I to gotta give him a little bit more break every once in a while. Um, he plays so darn hard. I, just, I think he's worn himself out just a little bit on the op. When he gets to the offensive end, he just doesn't. Um, he doesn't have as much in the tank as he did maybe earlier. Um, I just think I need to do a better job of just getting him a little bit of a break here and then. Uh, not I again. I, I don't like not having him on the floor. So again, it's a little bit my fault because I feel when he's out there, he he does good things, even though he's he's, he's struggling to score right now. Kevin, you mentioned you're used to you know coaching in the nine o'clock game in the tournament. What for? What are some of the nuances you know of being in that late game? It's a little bit different in conference play and conference tournament play because you do get you get the advantage of watching all the games during the day, which is kind of fun. Um, you know, like I, I love watching all the other games, so I think that eats up a lot of your day. Unlike a normal 9 p.m. game on a Tuesday night, like, you know, you're going to watch the news, you know. I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> I, I apologize. No, I, I meant that like, you know, I'm talking about a kid. Kids aren't watching the news. I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm, I'm talking about regular kids. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about me. Um, I, so I think, I think that's a unique perspective this time of year that, is that you get to watch so many other conference tournaments. Like I'll obviously be watching the Big East tournament too. Um, and then I think it, the, the biggest thing is if you do win, it, it is a tough turnaround. I think understanding how to handle that the next day is really big. And, and luckily I've, I think I played in the Big East nine o'clock game for like four straight years. So I think it's 
the biggest thing is adjusting to the next, if you, if you win your game at being able to adjust the next day and understanding what to do with your guys and how to get them recovered, how to get them prepared, how to put your scout report in, how to put your game plan in a very short period of time. And what gives you cause for confidence that you guys are going to be able to flush the last week out? And we've done a pretty good job at that. You know, like I said, like I, I'm looking forward to getting to practice. Um, I loved how, I'll be honest, I loved how disappointed we were after the game. You know, it almost, it, it was, it was very, very emotional. There was guys yelling at each other, um, guys yelling at me. You know, I love that. Um, their heart was into it. They wanted it. They knew it was at stake. And I think when you have that much buy-in and, and kids care that much that, you know, that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. And so when we get out on the court here in about, 30 minutes it's a new season and so i'm looking forward to it i know they are um and we've bounced back pretty good i mean we took a pretty big you know we got killed at michigan uh, we got beat on our home court pretty bad and we've bounced back and, and played really well and so we played well at penn state I, you gotta give them credit they made some plays down the stretch so i like the way we played so i'm just gonna focus on that um, listening to LaVal Jordan actually gave you a lot of credit the other day for bringing a different style of play to the Big Ten. Have you noticed that over the course of the Big Ten season, and are people going to see that on a larger scale this weekend? You know what? Um, Chris Naki asked me that. You know, I think people have had to adjust the way we play a little bit, but I've also had to adjust the way this league plays. Like, all these teams are new for me. So um, going into – a typical Big East year, I had a drills for, I had Villanova drills, I had uh, Providence drills, and I had Creighton drills every year that I put in. This year was kind of new to me. I didn't know what really to work in, work on. Um, I knew the teams, but until you play against these guys and you really kind of see the, the ins and outs of what they do offensively and defensively, I feel like I'll have a much better feel of what we're going to have to do next year to prepare for it. Like Michigan State's, a, I think, is a little bit different of a, of a prep than I've ever had. Iowa's a, a different prep than I've ever had. Um, so I think, you know, I don't know how much different we play than everybody else in the league. Um, our tempo's kind of in the middle. Our defense is pretty good, but we play 92% man-to-man. So I don't know how much that – Laval is a good friend of mine, so I think maybe he was just throwing a compliment out. So I've been, I've been friends with Laval. I, I got that most respect for the job he did at Butler, so I think he was just being nice. Coach, what do you like best about the makeup of this team as it goes into the conference tournament? I I really like the fact that this is I feel that we can go inside and outside at every position. We post up our four, we post up our five, we post up our point guard, we post up Hawk. Um, the only position we really don't post up is a two. So I feel like at times where I feel like um, maybe in the beginning of the year, I struggle with trying to get matchups and, and mismatches, I think, because I have so much confidence in our post play that, you know, if we need a bucket, uh, we're going to be able to go down and get one. Thank you. Hey, guys, uh, not to harp on Sunday, but just because of the fact that it cost you the Friday, you know, the double buy, the way that it ended, Getting past that one, does it help to have you know, so many, although not new players, a lot of experienced players to be able to put that kind of thing behind you? And even Judy, now you're year two for you. You know, if it was a bunch of freshmen and sophomores, I imagine that would be a lot harder to put that one behind you. Is that accurate? Do you agree with that? Um, I would say so. Um, definitely, you know, the experience in this team understands that, you know, it happened, it's, it's passive, but our future is in front of us. So, like, just trying to lock in on the game and, and the um, tournament, really, just to try to win the championship is the most important thing for this team right now. And Coach described just how it, immediately afterwards how how angry you guys were about that result, and you know to be able to uh, uh, let those emotions out, and that, that that's okay. You know, as Ken said, that someplace that's not okay. To, you know, you, that then can lead to a downward spiral. To almost be encouraged. How important do you think that is for you guys? Yeah, it's definitely. Um you know, it's definitely an emotional sport to play, you know, especially for, like, guys that show a lot of emotions, like, like me, like, guys, like, that's real passionate about the sport. 
Um, and sometimes you just can't like always wear wear your feelings on your sleeve on the court. You know, you got to be all positive. And sometimes those those feelings after a loss they just build up and boil over. Sometimes and they, it kind of gets it kind of gets um it kind of goes out goes gets out of control. And you know, we you know we understand as family. We we stay together. We we let that happen. We let it, everybody express how they feel, and then we just get back in the lab and get to work. One more thing, and Julian, being in a conference with so many great big men, to be all conference, honorable mention, sophomore, what does that mean to you? Um, it means a lot, you know. Um, definitely work to be done there, and I feel like I can keep getting better and maybe make one of those teams next year. Uh, yeah, Don, just kind of, you know, having the career you've had, you know, coming from Mount St. Mary's and Siena, um, I was kind of wondering, like, if you had, if you could give one piece of advice to maybe a guard who's getting looks from, you know, a higher level from, that is maybe playing at a lower level, looking to get to, you know, a big East school, Big Ten school, uh, what do you think something that's, you know, important to, to get to? Um, I would say go somewhere that fits your style of play and somewhere that you could be an impact on winning right away. But I think that's the most important thing in order to showcase your abilities and your skill set.